Good morning. Hope you're all doing well this morning or day or wherever you watch this. Up at Hacienda Rosa today, and we're going to be doing a, a move of this chicken coop, this mobile chicken coop system here. So I wanted to take you along the ride so you can see what I see our process here, see what we do, what the goals are, etc. The uh, generally the process though, because it's a really easy process, but sometimes people can get a little overwhelmed with thinking about how you would actually go about doing this. So um, there's basically three main steps. I think it's three. I just kind of made that number up off the top of my head. So let's see if I can roll with it. So first step is the fencing. So this mobile fencing made by Premier One. This is the shock or not fencing by them. Um, I actually really like this, except we have noticed that it is not quite dog proof when you are using the not part of the shock or not uh, fencing. Because we are not using an electric electrifier here, or uh, basically we're not getting the fence electrified because we don't really have major predators. However, the uh, one of their dogs here gets really excited about the chickens and tries to attack. I don't think he'll actually kill or she'll actually kill the chickens. She just kind of gets excited. She likes to play. So, but we've noticed that she's been breaking into these, uh, to the fence quite a bit. I've had to do a lot of repairs because of that dog. So, you know, that's life. Maya, she's just, she's a pup. She's learning. She's excited. You know, you can't really hate on her for that. So first step, move the fence. So we're going to do that. Super easy, super simple. Uh, next step is actually, uh, move the coop with the coop itself. So our coop is this mobile chicken sh coop. It's a mobile chicken coop. It's uh, based off of Justin Rose Chickshaw mini me design. And I just basically added a pitch roof to that exact same design. So um, that's our coop. It's on wheels, as you can see right there. So that'll be rolled into position. And then after we have the coop in place and the fence in place, then we're just gonna kind of do the final steps of making sure we have all the needs of the chickens, you know, their water, their food and everything. We get all that moved over um and ready for them to actually be using so the reason we're moving it today is because where they've been over here is actually going to become another part of the uh home garden for the property here up at hacienda rosa oh hey rooster this guy's still young and really wants to make sure he shows that he's in charge so he likes to charge at me a lot but this whole area where you see it's mostly kind of mulched and disturbed no real growth growing that was all because of the chickens. They did all that work for us. And then we're going to turn that area into a garden. So that's the goal. That's the plan. And uh, that's what we'll be doing today. All right, so first step, let's get the fence moving. So these fences they basically have two ends here. Uh, you can tell the ends because they have these uh, this shock, this little shock thing. This way you'd actually be attaching. If you're uh, electrifying the fence, you'd be attaching it to here. There's also one on this side. So that's how you can kind of tell if you're looking at a quick glance at one of these kind of fencing systems. This is where we're gonna join. And you can see here, there's just little ties. You untie them here. Once that's untied in a couple places we have it tied, then we're good to go. Boom. Just like that. Of course, the chicks are gonna try to get out while we're doing this, so I'm gonna have to try to prevent them from doing that. The goal here is actually gonna be moving the, the coop over to this point here. So I'm gonna move it over to here because this is gonna be like the flattest spot around this general area that I can put it. So what we're gonna end up doing is moving the fence or the coop out this way and then around and then we'll roll it right in here. So this is where we be where the coop's gonna go. And then the fence line, I'm actually gonna keep this banana circle. So what I'm standing uh, next to or under right now is a banana circle that is, uh, we're basically doing a major maintenance by letting the chickens uh, really clean it out for us. So um, this banana circle here, we put this in about three years ago and it's doing really well. The bananas are really starting to really thrive now. For a while they were pretty small, but now they're starting to get nice and big. I think the chickens are helping. These chickens are very talkative this morning. But basically this is a, uh, a sunken pit here. It goes down about uh, three, four feet deep here. And we basically bring in all of our really bulky mulch and we place it in this system. So that's palm fronds. We have so many palm fronds on this property. You can see actually right up here in this palm tree right here. Uh, there's a couple, that thing's about to fall. This one's about to fall. So we get a lot of these really big bulky materials 
um, and we throw those all in here and that helps feed these bananas and also gives us a place to process that. Now in an actual, in a fully functional uh, banana circle, I just want to say this so people out there understand, you should really have the mulch probably about this high. You want it to be really piled up, really, really tall, so you get lots of nutrient going in and lots of breakdown happening. So just keep that in mind. As you see this one, it's not quite up to par, um, but it is working. That's the nice thing about banana circles is as long as they have enough to feed off of, they're gonna be okay. Bananas are pretty resilient. So uh, I think next thing I'm gonna do is move the coop and or the fence, we'll see. I think the coop first, but I might need a little hand, so I'm have to wait for Rio, who's gonna help me today. So I'll start with the fence. So I like to first start, if I have any stakes or anything that's holding down the fence in any place, if it was high in places, that's the first step, take out all the stakes. So in order to convince the chickens not to constantly be trying to get out while I'm doing this, I'm gonna give them a little bit of corn. I don't love giving chickens corn, but they have it here and the chickens love it, so. Chicky, chicky. for a few minutes. So you can see here, this is where the fence was. Basically went right along here and around behind the chicken coop here. And then it's ended right here. And I just took it and ran it up this way to basically shut him into this small little pen as we move the whole system. This is Rio. Rio uh, Rio's the son of the owners here. So one day this will probably be his property. So he's essentially my boss here. So yeah, I think what we're trying to do here is move. He's gonna help me move this coop over here because it's heavy and I don't want to do it myself. All right, we're not going to go cut a log to go across the slope here. So you can see there's already sweet potato starting to grow here. We had it, we just shoved a bunch in the ground here just to try to help loosen and prep the soil um, in this little grassy area. But as of now, we haven't really done much with it and it just, it's not really decompact or anything. So we're not ex expecting tubers to, to form, but um, we would like to have a nice big sweet potato patch here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a go grab a log from down in the forest here and lay it across here, probably about this level that I'm pointing with my finger to about here. And then we'll actually put the fence line on the outside of that. So as the chickens start working and working and scratching, um, they'll have a boundary. So all that stuff doesn't move down the slope here. And also gives us a nice delineation of where we want the, uh, where we actually want it to all go. So it's a nice uh, two in one there. Find the chickens. Oh yeah, we got a nice big dead one that wants to fall right here. I'm gonna try to put you guys somewhere where you won't get hit by it, but still get to enjoy the action. Tropical vines right here, folks. I think you have vines bad at home in the temperate climate. Here you go. All right, so we got a little log here. Probably could be a little thicker, but this will do. This will do the start, and then we'll add more and more and more and build it up. Logs in place. We're gonna put the fence line on the outside of the log here. And then we're going to bring the coop over to where I threw all that corn before. So hopefully they've eaten it all by now. And then uh, we'll be good to go. It's a quick process. We're, we're doing these extra things, but this actual whole process is really quick. All right.
I think we actually roll it in this way so you can reach the eggs from the road. Hey -oh. Yeah, something like that. All right, we just moved that coop and realized after the fact that we had a mama sitting in here trying to lay an egg. The whole move, you all right, mama? You okay? Was that scary for you? Yeah. All right, so that's all moved. Next step is just gonna be kind of basically finish up the fence line move that we wanna be doing here. And I'm actually gonna start from this side cause it looks like it'll be a little easier for me. Rio is securing the coop. We used to have a little kickstand, but the kickstand uh, broke off in all of our moves. So it no longer is holding up. So we basically usually put one in the front here like you did there to level it out. And then the rest of them tend to go, hey -oh. uh, rest of them, sorry. Rio has almost had a big fall there. And I almost missed it on camera, so I was a little sad about it. And then also at the back there, we usually put one to help prop it up so that if, uh, I don't think we need one over there. I think once we get the back uh, bricks on, it'll kind of push down a little bit. In the back there, we just push it up to keep that raised because this is can just pivot up. So we want to make sure that whatever's in the back, like I said, we used to have a little kickstand, but that broke off fairly quickly but so now we just basically add a couple bricks um, to keep it nice and sturdy so they don't fall forward because because this thing's on wheels at the center at the center here it can pivot and fall straight down this way or pivot up and fall straight down that way There you have it guys, we're in a nice new spot. Those ladies have uh, some fresh grass. Fresh grass. Dust baths are really important for their kind of keeping the mites, uh, keeping their mites off. That's how they clean themselves from the mites, help protect themselves. So we're just gonna try to go fill up that dust bath there. We just use old kitty litter boxes because they have that little lip on them at the bottom. Um, that kind of helps hold in all the stuff because that's the hard part is actually keeping it all in there. But you want is like really grainy, kind of dusty, fine. This also also doubles as a grit uh, area for them. They need that grit to uh, chew up all their food because they don't have any teeth. So they eat little pebbles and small rocks and small little sand particles. And then in their gizzard, that's what actually digests everything. So we like to make sure they have plenty of that so they can actually digest and make us more eggs. So water, we basically just rehung up the water on there. The food, we're just gonna move that stuff over, which is just these little pit pans right here. They have their, we have a little mobile food bin that we can bring up and refill from the main stock of supply that we have. It's another dust bath Rio's picking up. So this is the area that they were just on. So let's take a quick look at this before we end today. So this whole area here was pretty much completely overgrown. I'm sure that I have an image that I can overlay here and I'll try to do that. Um, but right here, this is all overgrowth and we actually made this into a bed or a couple beds at one point and then seeded it to a cover crop, but we just ran out of time and energy and didn't get around to actually processing it all. So it went back into wild jungle as things do here in the tropics, if you ignore them. So, this area was all that and we brought the chickens in to help us disturb it, uh, design disturbance so we can go back to just bare ground again. And so the chickens while here scratched in, we add a lot of organic material in the form of this grass from around the property. And you can see down here, there's still lots of kind of weedy growth that we'll pull out when we're actually making these beds. All this here is coitre, which will just keep regrowing and regrowing. But they helped us basically take it from lots and lots of growth to just a little bit of growth underneath that little layer of mulch. 
Next step is for us to establish beds here, kind of permanent beds, or close to permanent beds in this little area. We'll decide if we want to keep all these, uh, all these papayas, probably based on whether it's a male or female. If it's a female, it's probably going to stay because we would love to have more papaya on the property. If it's a male, we already have plenty of those on the property for pollination. So once again, I've shown this before, but here's a male flower. You can see it kind of has this longer stalk and it branches out and there's a whole bunch of little flowers. This is also a male right here. This one, we have yet to see flowers. This one, we've yet to see flowers. Not sure about that one either. So still unknown, still unknown. Here, the female flower, I see one up, up there. It's a little too high for me to show you, but just so you guys are aware the female flowers look like. So female flowers, they'll be really close to the to the stalk here, to the stem, be right at the edge there. They tend to be a little bigger like this one here. See that? This one actually probably was just pollinated and it's starting to form. And then right down here you can see that's a baby papaya starting. Right there. So that's where the papaya grows right up against the, the, the uh, stem of the papaya tree. So if you're ever wondering if you had the male or female, that's how you can tell. So, but for this area, to kind of go back to this, this whole area is going to end up being basically more garden beds, probably more uh, crops that'll take longer to produce, a little longer, at least for the home garden, because right up here, so this is a pathway here. I've said this before in different videos, but in case you haven't seen this, this is a walkway that's overgrown right now, but it is a walkway. This area will be a little growing bed for longer term crops as well. And then right up there, there's two terraces for their main kitchen garden. And then right up the hill here, that's where their kitchen and house is. So they can just walk right down and come down here and come into their crop garden at the bottom. So this will be probably more like, you know, the calabasa, the, the pumpkin, the squash, the stuff that takes longer and takes up a lot more space, but you still want close to the house so you can actually harvest and have it ready whenever you want. So that's what this area is gonna be and really whatever else they wanna put in it. So my job here is not to tell them what to do, but to help prep them in the right direction so they can uh, choose the crops they wanna be growing. So that's what I'm here for and that's what I'm helping them do. So that was it folks, that easy. We moved the chicken coop, we moved the fence. It's really nice about this uh, really light Premier One fencing. I, I recommend them definitely. Again, we have had some issues with the dog uh, chewing it up a little bit. But if you did have an electric shock on there, that would not be an issue because they would get shocked and not come back to it. Uh, the chickens occasionally get out of here through the little holes that have been made from the dog, but we just have to keep patching those as we find them. And uh, so that's been no problem without an electric shock there. Having a mobile coop that you can just roll to the next location makes life so much easier when you're trying to be moving chickens to prep garden bed areas for you because then you don't have to like pick up anything and move it really, really hard. It just makes it so much easier if you have wheels. <laughs> wheels make life much easier. And then we just saw a little basic finishing touches, make sure they have food, water, etc. make sure everything's happy and check the fence. So we haven't actually checked the fence yet, but I'm gonna do that right after I get off this uh, vlog with you. Uh, make sure there's no holes or gaps at the bottom of the fence here, because it's pretty easy at the bottom here. If it's not a perfectly level ground, you can see there, it'll. Uh, easy to kind of lift up so we might put a stake right here just to hold that down so that they don't get out through the bottom of the fence so we look for those low points and we look for the high points to find the places where they might be getting out and that's about it guys that's the the move of the mobile chicken coop and chicken fencing system uh, so they can continue to prep garden beds for us in this case it's going to be for kind of sweet potatoes and long-term storage crops uh, over there and where they just were is going to be uh, the kind of longer term home garden uh, beds so looking forward to developing this further and we're going to keep working on this and i'll keep you taking you along the ride to see what we're doing hope you enjoyed today if you like what i'm doing please like and subscribe to the channel it really helps me get more reach and have that motivation to keep going i did get a really kind message from of you guys yesterday over in uh where is it malaysia i think it was um, just saying that they, they haven't been seeing much content that's related to the, the humid tropic kind of environment and appreciative of that. So thank you to, uh, to I think, was it Neems? No, I forget what the name was, but thank you for that comment. It really, those kind of comments really help me uh, keep going. It's great to hear from you guys who are liking what I'm doing and, and uh, enjoying the content. So thanks for that. 
Hope you have a good one. And uh, until next time, we'll see you.